Jenny Fletcher was born about the same time as my grandma, Doll. And it just made me think, this is 19, uh, 1890, um, Jenny Fletcher was born into a family, 11 siblings. Um, so she's living in Belgrave, which was very much downtown, pretty tough, pretty hard going. So her life would have been very, very tough. From an early age, uh, maybe 12, 13, she was actually working, uh, maybe serving, cleaning or whatever. She's out there in the community, putting in a shift of 12 hours a day. But Jenny Fletcher was also learning how to swim. Now, we don't quite know why, but she just learned to swim. And where did this fantastic woman learn to swim? In our canals and river. So I guess she'd stroll from, probably sprint, <laughs> from Belgrave down to the riverside, and she'd train in the local river. She became a very significant, significantly known swimmer in the country. And I think I get my research right in about 1906, 1907, she had the world record for the 100 yards, as it was then. And so in 1908, when the Olympics came round, um, they said, would you compete? She wanted to compete and nobody else would. So here's the greatest swimmer in the world. At uh, 18, nobody would compete against her. Um, when she came to the 1912 Olympics, she was invited again and she won the relay with obviously three others. Uh, and she managed at that time, because she was going a little bit over, uh, she got a bronze in the, in the freestyle. Well, have I said enough? What a woman, what an iconic uh, person. And I just feel there's so much to learn in our community from a role model like that. It was not expected. I think a woman's place was, unless she was a landed gentry, you know, was in the home, you know, doing the, those chores or becoming a bit of a show if you're in the, high, uh, the higher classes. Uh, I, I just don't think people did what Jenny Fletcher did. I don't imagine she said, I'm going to be an Olympic champion, but she just wanted to be out there. Uh, so she was serving her family, uh, her community, and she was just setting the bar very, very high. So she was breaking all the moulds. She was, I keep saying it, but I don't mind saying it, an Olympic champion. You know, I mean, it's, you don't, you, you sort of don't imagine this, do you? You know, you, you're thinking, how the hell could somebody be that good and at 15 and she's already working a 12 hour day on other things? Incredible. Off the chart, you know, it's the same level as Leicester City when at 5,000 to one. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's marvellous, marvellous. She just trained and trained and trained. What, what was it that Einstein said, you know, it's 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. And I think that probably typified um, Jenny Flesher. When she realised how good she was, so you suddenly rock up at some meeting that's been arranged in the Midlands and you're like streets ahead of everybody else. Oh, I'm not bad at this. And then somebody taps you on the shoulder and said, well, actually, you're good enough to swim for Great Britain in the Olympics. And, and then when she breaks, oh, I've got a world record. I imagine then you're thinking, well, why, why wouldn't I want to compete? Why wouldn't I want to show my talents? And there's a wonderful, wonderful uh, photograph which I've seen when she won the uh, relay in Stockholm, when the King of Stockholm was presenting the prizes, as you do. Uh, when women came out of the uh, pool, they were, these were the days where women's bodies were not to be, you know, seen, you know, too much. Uh, so they shrouded them in a, like a, a cloak. But there's a fantastic shot of the four women you know, with their sort of rippling bodies, you know, um, coming out and uh, and looking very proud and uh, 
and happy and you're thinking, by golly, that must be something, you know, to be an Olympic champion coming out of the pool and there's the King of Stockholm. She should have been in two Olympic Games, the 1908 one, but as I've said already, nobody would compete. So um, there, was not, there was not a category in that one for, for women to swim. So she did only appear in the uh, 1912 Stockholm one. Um, and soon after that, she did actually retire, you know, technically. She did swimming coaching and therefore she became a professional. And of course, it was absolutely all amateur in those days. So she did retire. She was taken on all comers in, in the, the river, in the canal. So I think um, maybe some of it's a bit apocryphal, but people were coming from far and wide to try and beat her and they couldn't. Uh, so I just think she was there in Belgrave, family of 11, well known, on a world stage, an Olympic champion, somebody you could just feel was a good person. And that's why I think she stands out from the pack. She just does stand out from the pack of great, great people. She happens to be female, so we should recognise her for everything she stands for, which is integrity, um, good community spirit, high aspirations, a true Leicester sportswoman who really represented herself, a family, a city, a country in an exemplary way. Uh, for me, she is the role model that everybody can aspire to. Um, when people say, oh, it's a bit, oh, I don't really want to go training tonight. So, well, actually, Jenny Fletcher would have been in the canal now in the middle of winter, you know, sort of. She, she, she's a legend and a, and a true legend. And I'd, I'd love to see her immortalised in this city so maybe we we ought you people out there maybe we ought to start a campaign now you know a statue to the memory and legacy of Jenny Fletcher.